Hello, hello, my name is JJ Reynolds, and we're gonna be talking about the GA4 API using Google Sheets and mixed analytics to then get around the API reporting limits that you might be running into Looker Studio. So if that sounds like something you're into, keep on watching. If you have not yet downloaded the container over at betterthandata.com forward slash YouTube, it shows you how to use GTM, the platform of your choice, Shopify, Thrivecart, or WooCommerce. If you have another option, we have a form to submit that. And it gives you a Google Tag Manager container that is pre-built, your variables installed, and you are off to the races. I don't think there's anything like this on the internet, so I'd, I'd implore you to go check that out. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about the GA4 API limits. So this is the GA4 API limits. You should find the documentation in the description down below. If you are encountering any type of uh, error messages, nine times out of 10 using GA4 and Looker Studio or any visualization tool, this is gonna be your predicament. So what you see here is you got 1,250 tokens per hour and 10 concurrent requests. Uh, if you load a Looker Studio report, it just uses API requests out the wazoo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a Google Sheet to be in the between the API and the report. So the report is gonna just connect to the uh, Google Sheet and the Google Sheet will ping the API every hour to load information into the report. So if that sounds like a plan, let's hop into it. We're gonna be using a tool called Mixed Analytics which looks just like this. Mixed Analytics is super awesome. Uh, there's an affiliate link down below uh, if you wanna grab that or you can go to the website. Totally up to you. Uh, it's the most affordable thing out there if you go to pricing. It's 12 bucks a month for the basic, 23 bucks for the business and $46 a month for the team. And do you see this? We're on the, we, this is the plan that we use over at Media Authentic, 60,000 requests per month. So let's hop into what this actually looks like. So we're just gonna open up a Google Sheet and I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like. So here we are, Google Sheet, ta-da. Uh, once you download Mixed Analytics, uh, you can use a free version, it's freaking awesome. Uh, go to Extensions, and you're gonna hop on down here, you should see API Connector, and you're gonna hit Open. This is gonna open up the dialog box for the Mixed Analytics Connector. And so this is where you can see, ta-da, you have your requests, all this jazz. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up, it also is the actual documentation from Mixed Analytics because I want to show you exactly how easy this is. So here we're going to import Google Analytics GA4 data. We'll link this also down below. Um, but here you can see all the different documentation. And we're going to literally just follow this because I want to show you how simple this can be. So first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go into your Google Sheet. We're going to create a new request. And it's going to take a, a second here to spin on up. It's going to be a custom and it's going to be a post. So we're just posting information to a URL, which is returns a response, which is gonna be the GA4 data. Then the beauty of this is you can hop on into this uh, analytics tool. Uh, we did all these steps already. And you can see here, oh, application is custom, method is post. They actually give you a sample URL. So this is how sweet Mixed Analytics actually is. Uh, I spoke with the owner actually um, a, a, week, a week ago, and they're talking about uh, what they're gonna actually be building out in the future. It's gonna be really nice would highly recommend you picking up a subscription anytime soon. Okay, uh, so then we're gonna head back over here. The, uh, the OAuth is gonna be Google Analytics. The content headers is gonna be content type and application JSON. So we're just gonna hop back into the sheet. I'm just gonna copy these because, hey, uh, why reinvent the wheel when you can just copy? So here is this. The OAuth is gonna be Google Analytics. Takes a second there. Content type, bam. Again, heading back into the tab, we're gonna copy the application JSON, which again, I'm not one to uh, ever stifle somebody giving me copy and paste things. Then we have the young request body. So if you go back in here, this is where things start to get a little bit more spicy, but I'm gonna walk through it really quickly. All this is saying is the date range. Then it gives you a start date and end date. So it's pulling the data from those things. Then you have your dimensions, which you can select. They have date, device category, et cetera, moving down the line, sessions, bam, bam, bam. Um, and then you have the limit of 20,000 rows. Pretty sweet. Uh, and then the last thing is a James path, which basically uh, allows you to format how that data is output. And we're gonna just use theirs because again, why reinvent the wheel when you've got something in front of you? So we're just gonna copy this, head on back. We are gonna grab the uh, request body, paste it in here. Everything should be in there. We are then going to head back over here, grab that James path. Sometimes I miss the copying here. And we are gonna head 
into the James Path output options down here, more options, and there it is. So theoretically, this should be looking just like that. Ta-da, ta-da. We then need to set the output settings. We're gonna go to here, set current. It should take a second. We got live demo, bada bing, bada boom. And we are gonna, the last thing I wanted to do here is change out the analytics property for our own property. So if you head into Google Analytics, this is what that looks like. Head over here into admin, property settings, property ID. We are in the Looker Studio VIP property. So hope you're following along. I'm gonna just paste that in there. Okay, so now we cross our fingers and pray to the API gods that it works. And I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna give it a name here and we're gonna call this um, test, test, what, what is this? Uh, GA4 report. I'm gonna hit save just so we save our stuff and I'm gonna hit run. Okie dokie, that did not work. So we're just gonna double check that. We, oh, hey, that uh, it did work. <laughs> there we go. So now you can see here, it grabbed all the, we got the date, the device category, all the things that were inside of this, right? Say device category, session source, medium, etc. What you wanna do is we wanna hop into the official list of dimensions and metrics. So click on this. We are now in here, ta-da. And what I wanna add in is I'm gonna add in the landing page because I wanna see the landing pages. And you just copy that, head on over here. We can then dimension name, device category. We're just gonna actually copy this section. We don't want device category. We're gonna paste in landing page, all right? And then we've got session source, session medium. We are also gonna need the host name and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, so here we have metrics, uh, sessions, and then instead of transactions, I'm gonna go for conversions. Um, I know it is conversions, so I'll just show you how I find that. Command F for conversions. And we should be able to tab through this. Ta-da, conversions is the total count of conversion events. Ta-da, head back over here. Uh, we are now in the typing in conversions, limit, bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna hit run again. I'm gonna hit save, hit run. Again, always gotta give a little uh, API God magic. Ta-da, it worked. So you can see here, we now have our landing page path, but we need to add in the host name, right? This is how things kind of go. So now I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna look really closely because it's very small. I'm gonna copy this, the name of this specific page. We're then gonna paste it in here, bam. And now we can actually put in here host name. So we have the host name, the landing page, the session, uh, source, session medium, session campaign. We then have metrics of sessions and then conversions. And I'm gonna hit run one more time. And hopefully we'll have another dimension here. And there we go. So here's, uh, we're looking back in the past, but here we go. And the last thing you need to do you just update your static uh, start date. We can actually make this a dynamic field where you're referencing the last date and then pulling everything from then, but we're gonna, not gonna talk about that right there. Stockton has a video, if you like look in the cards um, or down below, that tells you exactly how to use dynamic values and also use pagination to pull a lot of data at once. But we're not talking about, we're just talking about the API, we're gonna get the basics. So here we're looking at 2261 and let's go, let's see if we can do 2226 Let's just do last month through today. So we'll do 11, one through 12, six, oh, six. So this should pull all that data, all of that place. We're gonna hit run. Hope you're following along. Again, this is uh, pretty fun when you can get it right because we're about to blow some minds. So here you go. We've got all these things with the host names. The last thing you're gonna look at is like, why on earth is this host, all these things up here being weird? They have a built-in function. If you go to edit fields right here, all you've got to do is edit the field. So here we can come in here and edit this and type in date. Hit okay here, host name. All right, landing, landing page path. We've got, oopsies, we got the session source. Okay, make sure that's on. And we got session medium and session campaign. Then we have sessions, right? 
And lastly, if I scroll over, we are going to have conversions. Okay, if we hit save on that, a little modal should pop up that says save. Um, and hit okay, hit exit, hit run, and sit back and watch the magic happen. Bam, there we go. So now we got date, bada bada, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into a Looker Studio report. So here we've got all the data going all the way down throughout time, uh, through all the different time periods that you, you wanted to see, like 11, 30, et cetera. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up our Looker Studio report. Here we have a Looker Studio report, our demo API. We're gonna come here and add some data and we're gonna add a Google Sheet. I'm gonna uh, pause the screen and just kind of uh, do this so you don't see all of the other spicy client details. And all right, so we just added that Google Sheet. Don't worry about that, nothing too crazy. So what we are gonna do now is we are gonna have this report, right? We're gonna have this little report right here and we can actually break it down. So we got host name. Oh wait, the last thing we need to do in our Google Sheet, I forgot we need to make this. Um, no, inside of our data source, we're gonna change the date field into a schema of date. Um, oh, it already did that for us, ta-da! So it, it knows it's a date. Sometimes it doesn't get that right. If, if it doesn't ever know that it's a date, come into the edit um, under the date field, all I have to do is select the actual date function here. It gets it sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why that is, um, but just in case you run into that problem, that's where it is. So now what we can do is we can put here, we have the host name, we then have the page path details. We can then also add in here, a, we can add in a control now of the date control, ta-da. Oops, not the right button. <laughs> we can add in a date control. And let's just do a last month. Hit apply. All right, so here you can see every single landing page that has had a session, um, basically a session to start a landing page has occurred. There is the page path of not set. That does happen, um, especially when you're like testing a lot of things. Normally you can kind of debug that over time, but in our case, we do a lot of testing. So uh, we have a lot of not set there, but ignore that. Uh, you can then have the host names, we have the landing pages. What you can simply do here is create a new field that says concat of the host name and landing page path. And now you have a landing page um, for your reporting. And so now we can get rid of these two. We can add in the number of sessions. We can then add in the host name, not host name, conversions. And lastly, uh, we can then add in the ability to filter. So here we can add another uh, control. Let's so make it a drop down list. And we can actually do this off of session source or medium. We can add in session source next to it here. Again, we're just working on a, a little demo here. So this is not nothing that you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. But uh, I hope you understand kind of the principle behind it. Okay, so now we've got our pages. We can see which ones have the highest conversions. If you wanted to, we could make another metric here that is uh, conversions divided by sessions just to give us, um, I want you to sum these up. Like that. And so now we have a loose conversion rate. Okay, this is more of a demo to show you what's possible of like pulling in different fields, but the idea holds true. Like you can do this for just about anything. So I change this to a percentage and hit apply. Okay, so as you can tell this landing page, the links page, crushing it, <laughs> which is great. Um, so here again, we just use the API. So now if you go to view mode, right? It does not matter how many times we load this, what we filter by organic traffic, we want to add in Google traffic. It should all work just as we thought because we are pulling this from a Google sheet and not from the uh, actual API. If you wanted to, uh, you can come into this and you can actually set this to run manually as often as you like to every day. 
every two days, every five days. And that way you are not in, you're not basically hitting the API at all when a report loads. You are only hitting it to load data into a Google Sheet, which is aggregated already, and you are off to the races. So I hope that this gives you, give you at least some examples, some ideas of how you can use a Google Sheet in, part, in uh, combination with a tool that's remarkably cheap to start pulling data into a Google Sheet to visualize in Looker Studio. Uh, you can decide, you, you can really pretty much do anything that the API can do via this tool. Uh, you just open up those docs, to follow this video, and you are doing well. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. And if you have not yet, download the Conversions uh, API, uh, Conversions Google Tag Manager container right over there. We are excited to have you.